Hi everyone, Tim Bearden again, Chief Academic Officer at Detroit Country Day School, coming to you now in our fourth week of remote learning, um, really five weeks since the governor's order uh, to stay at home, uh, coming off a week of spring break that was much needed for our students and faculty to kind of recharge. A couple of things that are really important I wanna share with you. You're gonna be getting an email communication from me later today um, to summarize this remote learning calendar for the remainder of the year. Um, we've made some uh, minor adjustments to our calendar for the remainder of the school year. No changes to April. Uh, primary change in May is that we're not going to give exams at the middle school or upper school levels, um, which has resulted in us then changing our calendar a little bit. Um, May 29th will be the last day for mandatory instruction for students and the last day for any work to be due at the lower school, middle school, and upper school. This actually is the same date that we would end instruction in a typical year. Um, just ordinarily, we would have exams at the middle school and the upper school, and at the lower school, we would have had field day week and activities and homeroom things that we can't really do virtually. In June, we'll have faculty office hours, catch up time for students to make up work that they're still missing or are late to turn in. And then we'll have advisor conferences at the middle school and upper school and phone calls and virtual conferences at the lower school just to wrap the end of the school year up and uh, make a plan for students for the things they need to do over the summertime to be best prepared for the following fall. And finally, summer school will start at the middle school and upper school on June 15th as scheduled. Summer programs at the lower school are still yet to be determined and we'll make those decisions in a few weeks. I wanna share with you some of the great things that are being done by our students and teachers. I think you'd be impressed with some of the work that's being accomplished in a remote setting. This is um, a PK3 student at home in her workstation, an example of a Zoom call with our three-year-olds in PK3, meeting with their teachers, um, seeing their classmates, their friends, um, a great way for them to stay connected. Even at age three, they're able to do this. Um, this is a PK4 STEAM assignment where students were read a story and then built a, a, a mock-up of what their cake would look like if they could build, uh, if they could bake a cake that would look like this, that would be something else. Um, in JK, students are studying different kinds of letters, capital letters, lowercase letters, um, arranging words into sight words. Um, so at JK, they're doing those things at home. Kindergartners are meeting on Zoom with their teachers and classmates, working with siblings at workstations at their home. Um, throughout our STEAM program, kids are continuing to do work at home using products they have in their house. Um, Mrs. Curletto gave this assignment where students were looking at the difference between transparent, translucent, and opaque. It's an elementary school assignment where students are um, finding things at the home to, to meet all those definitions. It's a second grade writing assignment where students took a picture, um, brainstormed a word list, and then wrote a poem using Pick at You or Chatter Picks. Um, this is an example of music composition. This is a second grader using hook pad to demonstrate his understanding of chord progression, and he used it to compose an original song. It's a second grader, pretty amazing work. Uh, third graders, this is an example of how we're staying in connection uh, with our house and homeroom kind of stuff. This is the blue house, um, sending photos of the kind of things they're doing at home, dressed in their school spirit wear. Mr. Bonkowski and the fourth grade teachers had the fourth grade measurement Olympics. Um, so in this case, the kids designed an Olympic event, um, created the uh, rules for it and the measurements that would need to be taken. And they, they played around with that, took the measurements, and then built a results table that allowed them to do analysis of that information. This is an interdisciplinary assignment from fifth grade where students uh, drew a scene from the novel representing a key concept. Sixth grade students wrote uh, hyperbole poems, um, and then in the sixth grade history class did a project on aboriginals. Mrs. Pohl's geometry class did the geometry in our own backyard assignment using things they have at their homes and their own geometric um, backyard definitions in order to create these assignments. Really cool assignment from Mr. Duras, eighth grade history, um, where students wrote their own primary sources around the issue of COVID-19. Um, its impact, its timeline, its impact on humanity, and its impact on their education. A great way for kids to understand their living history. Our specials continue to do great stuff. This is an example of artwork done by middle school students at home and submitted via Canvas to Mrs. Kitchen and Mr. Keene. 
This is a freshman world history assignment where students traveled from their couch and created um, a kind of a road trip using digital tools to show different places they could visit around the world. That's an example of authentic assessment at the upper school where math students taught lessons, um, then recorded them and shared them with their teacher to demonstrate mastery of an assignment. Similarly, in Honors Algebra 2, students solved equations, plotted their uh, results on a graph, and those plots ended up creating these little pieces of artwork. So pretty complicated math to yield these fun little, little drawings. These are some great assessments from Mrs. Lamb's anatomy class, where instead of a traditional test, students demonstrated their understanding of the circulatory system by creating these charts um, and graphic designs or by recording a video of them um, giving a lesson or explanation of how it works. All of these things are part of um, our educational plan, our epic instruction model that yields what we hope is going to be um, young people who are honorable, inquisitive, innovative, and all the elements of our portrait. And we really um, are appreciative of all the efforts of our families, of our students, in particular of our creative and innovative faculty who are just doing a fantastic job keeping our kids on track. Thank you again. Um, look for more information from me soon, and you'll get the calendar stuff in the email today. We appreciate all of you.